transcutaneous CO2 measurement is a measurement of the CO2 levels in the tissue. And for that purpose, a pH electrode, so-called Stowe-Severinghouse electrode, is used at a defined skin surface. And the electrodes heats up the skin up to 42 degrees of Celsius. And following the CO2 is able to diffuse through a membrane into the electrode and can display the CO2 levels in the skin. In respiratory care, this kind of uh, measurement is used to get an idea about the CO2 levels in the blood system. It's measured in the, at the skin, not directly in the vessels, but it's useful to get an idea how the CO2 levels or the alveolar ventilation might be. Transcutaneous CO2 measurement can be used in different scenarios. It could be used in mechanical ventilation, for example, in NIV, that's true. But it could be used in invasive mechanical ventilated patients as well, or in spontaneous breathing uh, patients. The interesting thing in NIV is that you, for example, in the acute setting, you can directly, continuously monitoring the reaction of the patient to the avail of ventilation and changes by the treatment. Transcutaneous CO2 is not the same like um, arterial CO2 values. The measurements are in a different spot of the body. It's on, measured on the skin and not directly in the vessels. But however, due to the technique, due to the um, heating of the skin, the blood flow is enhanced, so it becomes more more accurate to the PaCO2 or the arterial CO2 levels, you maybe are interested in respiratory care. So the most, uh, research, most modern research um, investigating the modern devices showed that it's more or less accurate to reflect arterial CO2 levels, but it can be different and it's not a substitution for arterial values. Transcutaneous uh, CO2 monitoring has some advantages over arterial blood gas analysis. The main um, advantage in my eyes is that it's a continuous and non-invasive procedure. So non-invasive means it's w with less pain associated than arterial blood gas, which needs a puncture of the vessels. And of course, due to the continuous mode of ventilation, you get a really nice trend about the answer, for example, of changes in alveolar ventilation. For this purpose, it's very important, for example, to use this monitoring during nighttime in sleep studies where you, have, you want to have a look at nocturnal hyperventilation. It's not sleep, disruptions, not sleep disrupting and can be used overnight at, for, for example, eight hours in a row without changing the position of the electrode. Transcutaneous CO2 monitoring can be used in different areas. In the ICU, of course, uh, if you want to follow up uh, a critical ill patient, but of course it can be easily used outside the ICU um, on specialized wards where you want to monitor patients with alveolar hypoventilation. You can use it even if you have the technical support and uh, the adequate users at home or um, by providers who want to take care about the patients. It's not as easy to use, like for example, pulse oximetry. It needs some preparation, some time to uh, establishment and to give correct values, but it's, it's uh, easy, it's portable, and of course, due to different um, healthcare systems and situations and scenarios, it, it's of course and technically usable everywhere you want to do it. There's many literatures um, which have focused on transcutaneous CO2 in the past. I would recommend uh, recent uh, reviews which were published in the Annals of the American Thoracic Society in 2014 by Hutmann et al or NASA in 2017 et al. And they were focusing on the original articles where you can go and have a deeper look inside topics if you're interested 
which are displayed as follows.